Welcome back. So this is my follow-up video. I'll be describing how to set up a client to connect to your Project Rider Dark Online or Athena server now. Um, this process is actually significantly more complicated. Uh, namely, it involves downloading the official source files, uh, running a custom patcher, and then downloading a translation, replacing the uh, KRO files with the patched files for English translations, um, modifying an official client to create a hexed client, and of course configuring that to connect to your local system. So, and there's also a couple of bugs I ran into that you may as well with this particular client. So in the first case, you're gonna download the RO torrent or KRO. Um, so this is a link to the location right here. It's in my tutorial video, or I'm sorry, not tutorial, video, tutorial guide. Um, but it's also regularly mentioned in the forums, uh, official R Athena forums. Um, next, we're going to probably want to run that. So I'm actually on Linux. I'm going to walk through all this on Linux because it's a little complicated. Now, I've already set this up once, but I'm going to be doing it again for the purposes of the demonstration. So the first step is going to be to create another, or in this case, a brand new play on Linux container service. So, and the general idea is that um, each container is isolated and play on Linux. I know there's a lot of other ways you can do this if you wanted to directly run Wine. I just find this to be more convenient for some things. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run an exe ms drive. So we'll go to over here. Plant, and here we go. So this is a fairly large executable. It's going to take quite a little while to download. So we're going to run this here. It's going to create an RO folder inside of the client folder here. Uh, and this contains a patcher, which we'll be running afterwards. Uh, let's see. So while I go through this, I should probably mention how this, some of this works. So there's a translation files that are managed in this repository. We're actually going to close that while we wait on the extraction to happen. So these are actually actively being updated, so sometimes you may run into issues where if you're using the very latest, you may have a bug or two. So every once in a while, you're going to want to update these and drag them back into the folder after running the updates in that folder as well. So run the updater on the client, then run the, uh, the git pull and transfer the files back over. So, um, and you may find that suddenly any error messages may be resolved. Alright, so that's been cloned. So next, let's see. The execution is finished, so our client should have finished extracting. All right. So the next step, we're going to run the patcher. So that would be running the exe again. We're going to go back into the folder. Client ro, and there's an RSU. There are two patchers. There's a patcher for the renewal and a patcher for the uh, 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 classic. We're going to be using renewal for this guy. So. It's going to open a tiny little pop-up. It's going to automatically run the patch operation. Um, and while that's running, we're going to clone the next component real quick. And the next component is this Nemo editor, um, which is actually very convenient. Uh, it makes it fairly straightforward to modify a client. Now, you can't just use the very latest client by default. You have to use a supported client, because not every client has already been... We haven't identified all the... I guess they haven't identified all the... Um, hex codes or hexable values in order to modify it. So the official supported clients you'll find on the, uh, the actual Arathena forums, um, and I've linked to a lot of that information in here as well. So if you're going to go to here, this page will take you to the latest supported clients list, and I'll go through some of the details and provide download links for just the client exe. Um, so like I said before in the previous video when we were compiling, we're using the 2015 October 29 client. Um, and what we need to do is we need to load that into the Nemo. Uh, Nemo is another executable, so we can run that from here as well. So let's go ahead and start that. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the client here into the Nemo folders. I will leave it as it is actually. All right, so we're going to browse for this. We're going to go into one folder above. Here's the client, so it'll find it, and then we just load client. 
This will say that the client scripts have been loaded. Um, if you try to use an unsupported client, you may see random errors pop up as you're attempting to configure this. So in this case, we're gonna do select recommended. And this will ask us if we want that I and I, and it'll set a bunch of defaults. Now, the ones that we want in particular to set that are not set by default, we're gonna use a Ragnarok icon by default. We want to make sure we use the data files that are going to be custom during the translations. So we're gonna say read data folder first. And you can also set additional settings. Previously, we created a GM account in the last tutorial, and that was only two letters long. So we're gonna actually make these adjustments here to allow us to log in with accounts and passwords that are shorter than two characters. In this case, more specifically accounts. Um, so this will allow us to actually log in. There are other settings in here that you are welcome to experiment with. Some are actually really cool. Like you can ex expand the uh, zoom in and out. You can actually improve the uh, map quality and you can do a few other things as well. Like um, I suppose there are settings for culling, which will affect like transparency of foreground objects, but that's a little buggy. So once you're finished making your selections, if you run apply selected, this will actually create a patched um, patched client and it will give you the patch information. So we can close this out. You'll notice there's now a patched file here. This is the executable we will be running once we drag it into the RO folder. So let's take a look. It looks like the patcher is still running now. It's at 41%, so we're gonna let that continue. Um, and I'm just going to run through this real quick. So we want the system and data folders. Um, if you are running classic, you would drag this into them as well. So in the event that you do an update, generally what you want to do is you want to run the updater, then pull this, drag this folder as well as this folder into the RO folder again and replace all the files or merge. Um, Cause this is the, uh, the update is gonna, the actual like system folder is going to replace all of these with the translation. So, uh, let's see. It's going to take just a little bit longer. I'm sorry to hold you guys here. Uh, <laughs> probably walk through some of the bugs I ran into. So uh, if in the event that you log in, you run into a bug where there is, well, let's talk about Linux first. You can have audio problems sometimes, and, and I've also had problems with uh, dual screen displays. So in this case, I have a uh, dual monitor set up. Dual monitor is broken unless you use the desktop background. Uh, it'll only work on the primary monitor and the secondary monitor won't get 3D acceleration. So by default, it won't render. It will just be a static screen. It's not very good. Um, and sometimes you'll experience some choppiness. So setting this value in the actual uh, shortcut that we would make would fix that. So if I open my shortcut file, for example, it's just this right here, you'll notice that I could set end and then I could set pulse latency. And this of course assumes you're using pulse. You may not be uh, equals 60 and then it would then we would run that in front of it. So, and I haven't found that to be the problem once you set a desktop background in Wine, once you configure that. So I'll probably show you that in a moment as well. So let's actually go over. Okay, so this is just finished. We're gonna hit start. It's gonna open up a blank window. Well, it's gonna ask, say it restarted, then it'll open a blank window, and then we just empty that. Okay, so now that that's done, let's actually copy the system and data folders over on top of this right here. It's gonna ask us if we wanna merge. We're gonna say always and apply, all right. Okay, inside the data folder, there is a client info. We're gonna actually edit this real quick. So this actually should be correct right now. So it's set to local, it's set to here. These are the default ports. The actual version for this client is 54. Let's see, 2015, 10, 29 is 54. Um, if you leave these here and users sign up and they start with 2,000 or 2,000,001, 2,000,002, um, so the GM account we created should be 2 million. Uh, subsequent accounts will be one and two, and they will end up looking like GMs in terms of their appearance in game. So I ran into this and I didn't realize that that was what the setting did. So if you want to avoid that, just make sure that those are gone from the client, um, especially if you're distributing, or create three GM accounts and make sure that those three are taken up by default. So let's see. So that should be the only major change. Um, so I kind of exported all this information. So I also ran into a problem where when I launched the game, you get a black background. So it looks something like this right here, which is not that useful. So this is the starting area if you have the wrong map data. So what, we, uh, what I was told to do was download this old Islud file and place it into the data folder, uh, not the data folder, the uh, primary folder there. So I'm gonna go into my downloads. Grab this 
put it into this folder here, and then we're going to edit the data INI. The data INI says what data file data files to load. There are some who have said that there's an uh, rdata.grf that needs to be loaded as well. Let's see, data All right, I'll just create a new one. Or it may create it on first launch. Um, so yeah, let's actually launch it instead. So I'm gonna take this patched client, I'm gonna put it into this RF folder. Now what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to run that. This isn't working out at all how it did last time. <laughs> there we go. So now it actually, it looks like it may have actually created that data file I was looking for, data.ini. Here we go. Okay, so I just had to rerun the executable one more time. And I'm going to set one equals old islu.grf. I'm going to save this, close that. And we're gonna set the settings in here. So I'm just gonna leave these as is. It's probably not gonna work offhand because I probably have to change the settings for wine. So I'm gonna do that in a moment as well. Um, let's do okay, it'll launch. Yeah, it's in the wrong window. So you'll notice that it's not actually updating. There's audio playing. So I'm gonna exit this real quick. So I'm gonna make a change real quick to wine so that we can actually play this correctly. So configure wine. to a desktop and there's no graphics here we go create a virtual desktop there we go and we'll try this one more time and this time it should launch fine there it is so the GM account we created the password oh, disconnected from all oh, right it's not running I should run the server first time huh? so let's open up our server folders. This is the Arathena from the previous video. We're going to do start. It's going to start up the server. And now, if we do count, hey, there it is. So we see the L4 server, which we had configured last time. We see that there are no players, and we can log in. Here we go. We can create an account. And there it is. And right, you'll notice my character sprites look like AGM. We'll exit for now. Okay, and thus concludes this tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, in the video, or um, if you need assistance, do post on the R Athena official forums. Uh, the people there are excellent people. They respond very quickly and are very good. Um, so thank you very much.